I'm Bill Steele with Polar 3D, and the printer we're showing this uh, week out here at CS is the our Polar 3D printer. Um, it is a compact, uh, portable 3D printer. It's actually the first consumer-based 3D printer based off of polar coordinates as opposed to the standard Cartesian X, Y, and Z. Uh, so in our case, we have the rotating build platform that also slides, which allows us to cover the entire build area with a very, very simple mechanical system as opposed to the complex arrangement that most other printers have, which generally leads to a lower cost. Our primary customer uh, for the Polar 3D printer is actually in the education market. Um, we'll sell to anybody, but our, our real focus is the education market. Uh, and we've built our entire business model around that, including uh, the printer itself, uh, the capabilities that the printer has, and what we've done, the way we've done this, is we've actually uh, seeded a bunch of schools throughout the country uh, with the printer uh, and, and got their feedback on, on what their actual workflow is and, and how the students are using it or how the teachers are using it. What we're doing is um, getting their feedback and tying that into the software that we've developed uh, as a part of what we call the Polar Cloud. Uh, and the Polar Cloud allows us to, to manage the printers, um, allows the students to interact with other students, to design parts, it allows teachers to share their syllabuses uh, with other schools, um, and to um, manage whatever printers they have in their environment, not just ours, but pretty much any printer. The whole idea is that the students can collaborate with other students to make their product better, the, pretty much the way engineers do it in the real world, right? Um, so they get used to this of uh, failing off and, you know, uh, and iterating until they get it right. You don't need a computer to use the printer. You can literally, from your cell phone, submit an STL file to the printer. It will slice it on board and print it without any user interaction. Uh, you can also monitor it remotely. It has a, a camera built in, it has Wi-Fi built in, it has pretty much all the connectivity there is built in. We also have what we call the ambassador program. We recognize that uh, working with these uh, schools that there are certain uh, individuals that are, that are talented in the 3D printing space. Um, so what we're doing is we're encouraging them by supplying them with devices and, and, and filament and, and material to allow them to you know, continue their own development, but also that uh, those particular individuals become gifted, they start helping others, right? Um, so they really start um, kind of this feedback loop that starts making the ecosystem be uh, better. They help build the cloud, for example. They help other students when they, you know, a student might have a question about a particular project they're working on or something like that. Um, so the ambassador program is kind of like a, I'll call it a, a self-feeding support network, right? Um, which will allow local support for local issues. The, the polar challenges are one of the things that we're helping, you know, like I said, we're focused purely in the, the uh, academic, you know, the education uh, space. Um, and one of the things we want to do is we want to help uh, drive that and we're doing that through what we call the polar challenges. And the polar challenges are uh, contests, if you will, uh, where the prizes are going to be devices, they're going to be materials, uh, but more importantly, they're going to be knowledge and financial incentives, whether that be actual cash or whether that be scholarships or whatever it is. Uh, and the way we're doing this is we're working with large organizations like Major League Baseball and, and uh, NFL, you know, organizations like that, to build a challenge around their particular um, venue. So it might be Major League Baseball where we take your favorite baseball team and the challenge is create the coolest part that you 3D print on this printer with that logo, okay? And then the winners will, you know, will get uh, that. But the cool thing about that is that the way you do it is you do it through the cloud platform and you share that with other students, right? So it's going to be really interesting to see who the winners are because you're sharing your knowledge of how you won with others and guess what? They can use that knowledge, right? So that it spreads very quickly uh, and uh, it kind of brings the whole level of everybody up as we go along. So we announced the product on the, the second, uh, I mean uh, on Tuesday the other day and uh, we are shipping on the 15th of this month, so January 15th. Um, they can basically buy it online through our website or through Amazon.com. And uh, through the rest of the year, we're, we're rolling out the cloud platform, we're rolling out the challenges. Um, our first challenges are going to be starting in, in June, or I should say finishing in June. We're, we're enlisting folks now with it, um, but we'll eventually get to you know a, a pretty much a polar challenge every three months. Um, and then we'll have, um, you know, the deployment in a larger organizations. So we have very large universities that we've been working with and we're ramping them up. We're basically replacing all their, I'll call it prototype hardware with the, uh, their, uh, the new production hardware. And I think that's pretty much it for this year. We'll, we'll hold off on the new products for next year.